We'll uh, <coughs> proceed on my later time. Without objection. Madam President, across the country this morning, Americans are wondering what's going on in Washington this week. They want to know why it's taking so long to fund the government. Americans want to know how we got to this point, and they deserve an answer. So here goes. Each year, the majority party in Congress is responsible for coming up with a budget plan that explains how they're going to pay for all the things that government does. It's not just a good idea. It's the law. Congress has been required to do it since 1974. Well, last year, the Democratic leaders in Congress decided they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to have the, to, to publicly defend their bloated spending and the debt that it's creating. So Republicans had to come up with a temporary spending bills to keep the government running in the absence of any alternatives and leadership from our friends on the other side. Republicans even passed a bill in the House that would keep the government funded through the rest of the current fiscal year, and which takes an important first step toward a smaller, more efficient government that helps improve the conditions for private sector job growth. This House bill would save us billions of dollars on our way to a conversation about trillions. And Congressman Ryan has done a service this week by setting the terms of the larger debate by outlining a plan that puts us back on a path to stability and prosperity. Unfortunately, Democrats have made a calculated decision that they didn't want to have either debate, so they've taken a pass on both. And frankly, it's hard not to be struck by the contrasting approaches to our nation's fiscal problems that we've seen here in Washington this week. On the one hand, you've got a plan by Congressman Ryan that every serious person has described as both honest and courageous. On the other hand, you've got people like the new chairwoman of the Democratic National Committee and the previous Speaker of the House dismissing that plan in the most cartoonist language imaginable. While thinking people have seen in the Ryan plan while thinking people have seen in the Ryan plan an honest attempt to tackle our problems head on, ideologues on the left have seen a target to distort while offering no vision of their own to prevent a fiscal nightmare that we all know is approaching. And they still haven't come up with an alternative to the various Republican proposals we've seen to keep the government up and running in the current fiscal year. They've just sort of sat on the sidelines taking pot shots at everything Republicans have proposed while rooting, rooting for a shutdown. That's why the Republicans in the House have now proposed another bill this week that will fund the military for the rest of the year, keep the government operating, and which gets us a little closer to the level of spending that even the senior senator from New York has called reasonable. The fact that Democrats are now rejecting this offer which even members of their own leadership have described as reasonable, is all the evidence you need that Democrats are more concerned about the politics of this debate than keeping the government running. So let's be clear about something this morning. Throughout this entire debate, Republicans have not only said <clears throat> that we prefer a bipartisan agreement that funds the government and protects defense spending at a time when we've got American troops fighting in two wars, there is a Republican plan on the table right now that would do just that. Democrats can accept that proposal or they can reject it. But they can't blame anyone but themselves if a shutdown does occur because they've done nothing whatsoever to prevent it. So with the clock ticking, I would once again encourage our Democratic friends to get on board with this proposal and to support the kind of spending cuts that the American people have asked for and that their own leadership has already endorsed. Now, on another matter, later today the Senate will vote on an amendment that one leading newspaper described last week as one of the best proposals for growth and job creation to make it onto the Senate docket in years. More specifically, this amendment, which is based on legislation proposed by Senator Inhofe, would prevent unelected bureaucrats at the Environmental Protection Agency from imposing a new national energy tax on American job creators. Everyone knows that this attempt to handcuff American businesses with new costs and regulations 
is the last thing these job creators need right now. That's why even Democrats in Congress have sought to secure the same kind of exemptions from the law for favored industries in their own states that we saw others from their party trying to secure for favored constituencies in the health care law. Democrats from auto states tried to have the auto industry exempted. Democrats from farming states tried to have farmers exempted. What these efforts show is that Democrats themselves recognize the dangers of these EPA regulations, yet instead of just voting for the one amendment that solves the problem, they're hiding behind sham amendments designed to give them political cover. Well, Republicans have a better idea. Let's try to make sure everybody is exempted. Everybody gets the exemption, not just some favored constituency. Let's not pick winners and losers. Let's let America's small business and entrepreneurs compete and grow on a level playing field without any more burdensome government regulations, costs, or red tape. The amendment that I've offered on behalf of Senator Inhofe would do just that. The amendment would give businesses the certainty that no unelected bureaucrat at EPA is going to make their efforts to create jobs even more difficult than the administration already has. So once again, I want to thank Senator Inhofe for his strong leadership on this issue. He's led the way in protecting American jobs from this burdensome proposal with determination and with common sense. And he deserves the credit. I also want to thank Chairman Upton and my good friend Congressman Ed Whitfield from Kentucky for fighting against this effort by the EPA and moving legislation to prevent it over in the House. Finally, on another matter relating to the economy, there are some signs today that the administration is beginning to take seriously a pending trade agreement with Colombia. Republicans have been urging the administration to act on this critical trade deal for months. This agreement would help American businesses compete on a level playing field with businesses overseas. It would help create American jobs, and it would help our relationship with an important ally in Latin America. So hopefully these reports, Madam President, are true, and the President will send this agreement, along with similar agreements related to Panama and South Korea, to Congress soon. This would be some extraordinarily good news for an economy that really needs it. Madam President, I yield the floor.